Emotion is one of the ways our body figures out what matters. What are the pieces of everything bombarding us that we need to hold on to and keep? The best storytellers know that emotion is a vital part of telling a story. I think creative content producers have a ton to learn from paying attention to the emotion of the viewers. You want to know, is it the desired reaction or is it a surprise that you may want to reconsider? When we think we're understanding each other's emotions, we're often getting it wrong too. We're not as good as we think we are. What's the best way to measure emotion? The classic measurements are you ask people what they feel. It's filtered by all of this cognition and whether I like you and whether I want to open up to you, it just gets pretty mucked up. Affective computing is a phrase I coined about 15 years ago. The idea was to give computers the skills of intelligence that have to do with understanding human emotion. We measure your face, your posture, your physiology, smiles, eyebrow raises, head nods. We pick up from the surface of the skin uh, two main components that are kind of like, are you stepping on the gas, revving the car engine, or are you stepping on the brake, you know, slowing it down. The stepping on the gas is measured through the skin conductance. It's called the sympathetic nervous system. The parasympathetic, the stepping on the brake system, is measured through the variability of the heart rate. And we can see that you started off looking distracted and then you got hooked at this moment and then you lost interest at this moment. These same sensors are now being used to detect seizures, to help with PTSD studies, to help with depression studies, and to help with sleep studies. We often have found with our sensors that what we see on the outside may or may not match what we're measuring on the inside. One big surprise for us at MIT has been that a lot of people don't really know what their feelings are. They know the feeling words, oh, you mean when their face does that, they're clearly angry. Uh, but they'll come up to me and say, Ross, I don't really understand what you mean by this feeling stuff. There are a lot of people in the world who really don't experience feelings the same way that others do. And the technology can help them get that, that sensitivity and dynamic range of experience. Now we give the inside data uh, equal or sometimes greater credibility. As we collected robust data from real life, we started to find these patterns that turn out to have real meaning. I'm thinking of an example where I was shown this movie trailer where this guy's sitting on the park bench and he's trying to appear cool to some other guys. And he makes these really crass comments about all these women who are not his wife that he's with. This was an ad for a chick flick, and they were trying to appeal to guys to go to this movie, we found out. Well, when we showed this to men and women, the women didn't like it, but they thought the men would smile and think it was funny. The men weren't smiling and thinking it was funny. What we see is that the the creative behind it tends to have this idea of what will work, and they're like determined to show people that this will work. And when we give them the feedback, sometimes they realize that I gotta go back to square one. That affective boost drives motivation, behavior, attention, customer loyalty. The honesty and the transparency can have a bigger emotional impact. Manufacturing it and faking it doesn't carry the same emotional effect. We can measure that. By giving people this feedback, it will just raise the bar for them to go and get what really matters to their viewers. They will be able to understand and appreciate the role that emotion plays in crafting and communicating a great story. <laughs>